Virgo risings and Virgo sun, moon, and Venus as well. Welcome. Doing an astro tarot fusion read. What we have here are major arcanas and a representation of the transits in the sky. Um, for going with the planets on the top here, and here are going to be the signs. Mars is in the back, and Sagittarius here. Um, <clears throat> they have a bowl, again, with the moon and Scorpio, and I'm Virgo rising, so I think a little bit familiar, so we talk a little bit about the astrology of it, and it's interesting to look at the cards, you know, the tower with temperance, that's, uh, you know, Mars is the tower, temperance, Sagittarius, Capricorn, you got the sun, and you got Mercury, and Venus, and uh, Pluto all now conjunct today, 29 degrees, the big deal, Jupiter shifted over to Neptune, uh, the hanged man, and the moon representing Pisces. So you kind of think you can get an idea of what might be going on just also by looking at the cards. Now, I'll timestamp, but later in the reading, I'll do an actual tarot read on these signs and try to get further um, into what might be helpful and what's going on. But I'll be mainly using here, just from this deck, the minor arcana as if these are the stars those influences that are greater than us and the minor arcana as it does reflects our own personal energy and how we're dealing with this energy of the stars and i will pull also i separated the court cards if we need to look at a court card i only do that if i feel like there's someone else involved otherwise we're trying to look at your energy it's the end of 2021 but the transit is for the 29th of December is a very significant day with Saturn trying to Mars and uh, our house as I should say the sixth house to the ninth house um, and then the big deal you kind of see here with the devil and you imagine Pluto now is is judgment and the Empress and she's kind of now with Mercury uh, just today really getting into and maybe yesterday uh, conjuncting with Venus so if I would say if uh, we haven't dealt with this kind of shadow stuff in some way and this is the fifth house um, for us Capricorn and it's about the Sun normally it's about the self it's about shining um, it's about uh, creativity um, children romance uh, fun play fun sex you know romantic fun sex uh be able to let your hair down kind of energy so it'd be something going on there we're usually here venus would bring up whatever's left for you or uh, somehow significant for you in the way of this devil energy shadow work you know obsessions uh, unhealthy uh, instincts of one kind or another, you know, can, doesn't have to be that dramatic, you know, in any way that we kind of betray ourselves, um, kind of look for something outside that's inside, and it's just hitting in the fifth house, it's kind of a, to me it's a lot about the self, um, I mean this could bring up uh, issues around shame too, like uh, it literally at the deepest level it's uh I'm, ash I'm ashamed to be alive. It may, might not even be articulated, but that's a belief system, by the way, too. And we're dealing with that ninth house, Uranus, up there, and that's our square. And, you know, something, I think, wants to change, you know, in terms of the belief system. It doesn't necessarily have to be about a religion or spirituality, even. You know, it could uh, be about a belief system, internal or personal belief system, see? Uh, that's how I think I'm um, feeling it um, and it's just a wrecking ball and it, for me it's a very much an emphasis on uh, daily habits routines that are healthy uh, Virgo's all just about health and the body and I'm feeling it and thank you spirit you know I'm kind of I feel like like I just got on board you know in time to maybe not die <laughs> um, for myself um, uh, could this, especially Saturn to the sixth house, it could be a tough uh, transit, you know, that we're all going to have, like every 
I don't know, 30 years or something. You know, you're going to deal with it. I'm in my second one, if you, you know, being 62. So as an astrologer, I always going to take that into account. You know, a Saturn transit to a house, a sign, an aspect. And they go play differently between, you know, an 18 year old and an 88 year old, obviously. Um, but we're not looking at your age here. Saturn is the world. You know, I love that. And so perfect. And the star now, which is hopes and dreams and wishes. And you look at these together here. And they're still in Aquarius. Now Jupiter has just left. And Saturn's going to be here for another year, year and a half. So it really is going to, to for me, um, it's a, a time I can see. Like, okay, I know, like, in a year and a half, if I'm lucky, I'll be in a lot better shape. But am I going to be in great shape? Probably not. I mean, I'm, I'm physically pretty challenged. But, you know, um, I know, I trust that, like, it's going to be better. Because at least for the next year and a half, Saturn's hammering me. And I'm on it. You know, I got help. And, I'm, you know, it's sort of like there's not options. It's kind of like towing the line there. You know, um, so that's just a Saturn transit to the sixth house. Anyway, you know, add into it the square to Uranus. It could bring in physical. I, you know, we don't like to do uh, health, but you know, this could bring in all kind of uh, pulsing erratic the health problems, flare ups of old issues that seem to come out of nowhere, maybe or these kind of things. Um, but again, I think it's too about really letting go of um, our belief systems. In the sixth house, too, a lot of times, I feel like it can be about study. I mean, it's Virgo, the great boat Virgo's the studier. Uh, in the sixth house, that daily routine. Um, so this could be a time of uh, kind of going back with Saturn slowing down and um, learning, you know, or going deeper into something or getting deeper into something. Maybe deep, deeper into our health routine, lear learning about herbs and vitamins and supplements and alternative medicine and this kind of thing, or just normal physical medicine, but just learning, you know, like every day watching YouTube for a half hour on uh, health. Uh, there's a couple, bunch of those I like, um, and there's definitely worse ways to spend your time. But in the sixth house, is kind of a hypochondriac, a little bit, I gotta say, you know, but. Um, I think the, the, I've been doing these readings now, we'll see how the tarot takes us, uh, at Jupiter, it's a, wow, zero degrees, Pisces, it's like, oh my god, what a cry, it's like, oh my god, thank god we're saved, <laughs> I, I just have such faith now, and I can feel it already, it's like, wow, it's like, I can breathe again, and that's our seventh house, so now, I'm um, happily coupled, but, you know, um, it's going to race through there pretty quick, but I yet might get married right in there before it hits Aries, you know? Uh, and uh, even if it does, and that's my eighth house, and I'm crazy, so let's bring it. So it's, and it's going to conjunct Neptune. It's not going to be that far away. So you've got, you know, the Wheel of Fortune and the Hanged Man and the Sign of the Moon. And to me, just the, the Neptune goes uh, so well as a this Hanged Man. Uh, with the moon, and the moon's always about something hidden, something you can't really get your, wrap your mind around, and you can't really see it, um, and that's the hangman, obviously, is that time out, seeing things from a different perspective, um, and Neptune transits, you know, as an astrologer, it's like they're so sneaky, and it's sort of like the stealth of the planets, and, but they really can get you, um, and this here with Jupiter going is got to be positive energy unless it's you know unless it's not aspecting things positively for you but I would say in this regard like if it's going to conjunct like Neptune is there but if it's going to conjunct a planet for you that's significant um, I got to see that pretty much as a good thing now if it's negatively aspecting let's say that it's squaring something you know um, here maybe Jupiter squares your Venus you know um, maybe just means you really time for you to uh, take a look at what your kind of uh, mm, ideals are for a mate and you know, for a, a love. You know, what do you want? Or even you could even say your values at that point. That square, you know, instead of just being frustrated, go well. Let me 
man, you need to really kind of reevaluate, think about what really is that I value. And, you know, do I value my spouse or loved one, our loved ones, you know, enough or something like that. And, but if it's positive, you know, and otherwise, I think this is where Jupiter's going to give a lot of gifts. Uh, Jupiter gives the gifts of opportunity, you know. And, you know, Saturn brings a gift, you know. I think Saturn's in pretty good mood, too. At 11 it, now, that exact square. Um, but out of this tension, you know, let's say good things could fall. And But what Saturn would bring usually is going to be work and lessons and, you know, uh, something to work on, basically. But that's not necessarily a bad thing um, because it will also bring stability and a foundation. You know, but it's Jupiter here. It's going to bring the Oprah-like energy. So if there, anybody's going to win a car, it's around this Jupiter energy here. And so, now I love that the Fool is Uranus, and you really get now you think of Uranus as at at fall and and Taurus. It's a worse position, right? So it it how you could really see it. Like the Hierophant's like one of the most stable cards in the deck, right? It's like that rock solid stable energy like being being religious really being spiritually stable like you know i'm this is the pope really and it's like this the buckins here okay and the fool is uranus and just I hate to say if uranus doesn't give a fuck that's uranus i mean really truly it's not playing like it's not posting a mem it truly doesn't give a fuck uh and um we kind of i think right there just with these cards even just intuitively you kind of get the idea. Um, here you got the guy jumping off, off the cliff with an umbrella. So, in terms of uh, how that's affecting us in reality, I really think it's all kind. I know for me, it's all kinds of uh, spiritual lessons, uh, wisdoms. Act. You know, it's also the ninth house is education. Um, you know learning in somehow in any way in the spiritual way and a, learning about our my beliefs and um with this square it's this tension it's like really making me open up my belief systems too and meaning opening up and look at them and belief systems are what a lot around what we value which is what the empress who's where kind of in hell still she's got mercury there like talking to her she's probably going ah get me out of here you know, and he's like, yeah, I got to go. <laughs> what, probably what usually Mercury mostly says, yeah, okay, I got to go. You know, um, so it could be like a, something to do with the value systems um, is how we value ourselves, and, you know, and all that good stuff. Um, so, and that's something we're working on with the Capricorn. And it's also Capricorn as well as the devil, which could be all of the kind of shadow stuff and obsessions that could be involved, you know. Um, so, and then lastly, the moon is in Scorpio. Right about when this reading goes out, if you watch it soon after it goes out, uh, on the 29th, it'll be right kind of in the middle of Scorpio where it's making a nice trine to Neptune uh, is kind of the main thing going on. It, you might have felt it uh, was opposite uh, Uranus for a while um, <clears throat> earlier so you know that could just be all kind of disturb it could be disturbing dreams that might have hit during the night for a lot of people um, you know if you had a disturbing dream there you go moon opposite Uranus see if it wasn't uh, exact particularly if it's also aspecting something in your natal chart all I know here I'm assuming you're Virgo rising right um uh, so, uh, but with Scorpio, that's the, that wants to go deep. So it, it's going to now want to get into this energy and oh, the moon has a lot to do with our mind. Of course, it's the unconscious mind mainly. It's like, so, but this with Scorpio there, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's at fall, you know, it's at fall in Scorpio, the moon, but it's at fall because it will go into the basement. It will go into the darkness. And I think that's what's needed. You've got Pluto conjunct Venus. Why not just go in there and just, like, deal with it? That's it. Um, um, go find the darkest, scariest door and just open it and go for it. So it could be right now kind of 
really a build-in feeling with all of this square and everything today of really uh, connecting somehow with this uh, Venus Pluto energy. You know, it could be involve a sibling, typically a sister, could in, um, involve you know a woman. Um, it could involve something. You know, here now Mercury's here today, hearing something or coming to some understanding about that some shadow part of yourself, of a woman that you know, of your divine feminine uh, nature, all of that kind of energy. And now, just to put a little energy on, pre-shuffle, but we'll pull this card now. This is a minor arcana. Gives us a little more insight what's going on by the signs here. We got this bowl. Now, I think the bowl, you know, of course, it concentrates energy here, you know, uh, from the third house to the ninth house, really. Um, but it also, I think, projects that energy. Think of a parabolic dish, like into the other side of the chart you know and for us it's uh all the outer planet mature energy um and we're very busy i think the way all this energy's been hitting us uh it's hitting us personally you know um really the really from the fourth house of mars and so um this is the area where we're again learning comes to mind too uh, again so let me see what we get clarify Sagittarius <laughs> with the two of Pentacles. So the Sagittarius energy is, is temperance. It's uh, I think it's like patient because it, everything's going okay and balanced it em emphasized it, you know it's uh, moving the water back and forth with ease and grace and um, there's also an element of angelic presence if you believe that way it's there. I mean you just talk to your angels some. That tower, I've been seeing it a lot in my tarot. Nine times out of ten, the tower now is clear in the way, you know. Huh. It's like parting the waters of the Red Sea. That's what the tower's doing. Um, and so this is really being balanced here. And now this brings in our personal energy. So we're, we're really in line with this Sagittarius energy. So kind of what this says, what I've been saying before some of these readings, what that could just mean... As here it's the holidays, hopefully you're off. It's the, As this goes out, it's the 29th, we're moving into the New Year weekend. Um, really taking some time off to enjoy yourself, you know. Um, the Two of Pentacles uh, would be like you earned it, you know. Doing things right, taking care of business, whatever had to be done um, as you've gone along with this Two of Pentacles energy. And let me see what we get for Capricorn, Ace of Wands. Wow. So, it, this, as I said, this is the house of romance, you know. Um, um, and this is definitely some kind of passionate sexual energy. That's what this talk about. Again, personal energy. So, this could be you feeling it. I get the feeling, too, with the Mars and Sagittarius. It's just about kind of lightening up, too. It's like really accepting and flowing and lightening up. This is a pretty light energy compared to a lot of what's going on here. Um, so maybe in doing that, you know, you meet someone. I don't know. That's kind of what that's implying to me. That's where I might look at. Let's look at one of our court cards. We got a queen of wands. So maybe you meet a fire sign, most likely a Leo with the lion's, uh, you know, uh, throne. And then, of course, the little kitty cat. And But, you know, Aries, Leo, Sag, energy for sure. And uh, someone coming in that's really confident and sort of uh, lights up the room type of energy. And that's very passionate. And I think... Um, um, just finds you in a really good place, you know, with this Mars energy. Let me see what we get for Aquarius moving along. Wow. <laughs> I had to tell you, now Saturn, when Saturn, when love is associated with Saturn, um, it's to stay. To be, well, it could be a lesson. <laughs> There's that. And, uh, it's always work, but it always is anyway. Uh, but you got to love your work. <laughs> Um, but it brings stuff, something to stay by and large. So weird how the, how to get the best focus. Um, so 
with this, with the world and the star card, I mean, very hard to read the world and the star. And now you can see with the Ace of Cups, how is that not you get your wish being handed to you, like on the hand of God, this goblet, this Ace of Cups. And, you know, that's signifying love, Ace of Cups. So I swear, I didn't really tend this to be a love reading necessarily, but it looks to me like kind of you're going along doing your business and this person comes who's the fire sign. They may approach you first. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, you may in some way, Virgo, look up to them, sort of, you know, um, kind of admire them. You might put them a little bit on a pedestal. Now, let's see where we go when we go into Pisces. And holy moly, look at the progression. Let me see if I can explain. I've never, this is amazing, seen a progression quite quite like this before. Because now as we get into, again, the Wheel of Fortune tells you you're going to bring something in, an opportunity. And this is the Neptune energy and the moon and the hanged man. And this is the Six of Cups, the soulmate card. That feeling that you've known someone your, your whole life and they seem so familiar. And look at the falling in love. It's like this is kind of, this is kind of like the sexual encounter. You're just kind of like blown away. They kind of really uh, get you going. You fall for them quick. I mean, this is like more than sex. This is like your heart goes boom and you're in, you know. And then no sooner than you're in, this is the showing you the energy that not only you're in, you're feeling like this is a soulmate connection, you know. And um, I got to wonder just if it might not be a Pisces personality. I don't know, you know. Um, being that that soulmate is coming out right there, you know, on the Pisces, <laughs> um, on the moon. Let me see what we get for Taurus now. Four of Pentacles. So, you know, Taurus is uh, the earth energy. Um, Uranus can have a lot to do with energy. Uh, that's another thing I should mention. This, this Saturn through the sixth house can... Uh, be difficult energy, draining energy. Um, we, um, it goes on for two and a half years. Um, so with Uranus there, it you can feel like the batteries run out. You know, I had that feeling. Just feel like you wake up tired. You know, you go to sleep and maybe you sleep for a decent amount of time, but you wake up and you're just like this lady. You know, you're just like, uh, want to curl up in the ball and stay in bed. Um, but this energy here, I believe, is kind of like an advice. Uh, like, if this is how you feel, they kind of honor this a little bit. Because I think, like, this relationship coming in, it's, like, moving, like, really fast. And you might just, I don't, this isn't saying anything about, like, it's a bad relationship or anything. But it's like, you know, give yourself a tick. If you need it, you know, cut yourself some slack if you need it. And really also kind of a little bit of hold on to your own stuff. You know, don't give it all away. <laughs> uh, you know, you can open your heart and everything. I mean, you know, um, kind of hold on to something substantial of yourself. Um, and then, wow, with the Scorpio energy. And I tell you, that's that's that shrine. The moon trying to Neptune, um, eight of wands. So if you guys weren't together yet, this is like all kind of wanting to be together. I think like being that this is on the high priestess about the um, intuitive nature or, you know, highest, most spiritual self. Um, it This could be just waking up, just thinking about somebody. And when you see the high priestess with death, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with sexuality, um, with death, and with with Scorpio, um, the sexuality is about um, intimacy. You know, I'm a Venus in Scorpio. You know, so you do some kind of a, like it's more intimate to kiss. Just to give one example, uh, perhaps than uh, intercourse, um, and it's all about the intimacy of it. Um, so I feel like that's what's being charged up for you um, with this uh, Eight of Wands. It's kind of like 
really being kind of turned on to the max. And again, because this is the personal energy involved, it's somebody's taking action. Um, I see them coming back in. It might be your person, you know, really uh, responding to you, kind of taking that time out here with your uh, Four of Pentacles, I just realized. Um, let me take a look. Let me clarify that, because I see, do see that as an interaction. Okay, look here. So what this is, Seven of Pentacles clarifying this. So maybe you first go, wait a minute, this is moving too fast here. And your person's like kind of scares them. They want to move fast, so they come even harder, you know. I mean, you're coming in as a Leo, Queen of Wands. So um, and to clarify that little interaction, time out, like just like a football game, like time out, we really need to assess what we actually have here. Um, and that's okay. I mean, it doesn't say, we'll leave it like this. Uh, it's kind of the end of the year reading. Um, I think I got the feeling like out of this, what, tell me I'm wrong. You know, you, you know that you're a good match, like sexually. You got that. You, you know that there's, they really are turn you on. Um, you guys have fun together, you get along together. Um, and it's just really kind of, swept you off your feet and um, uh, took your breath away how fast you know it moved with this soulmate energy too coming in with the six you know the six of uh, cups that's really uh, making you want to uh, you know um, uh, go deep and it just fall really deep and really fast and it's okay if you need to take a minute because you know, this won't stop it or anything. It'll just help you get grounded. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think this will help you move ahead in the relationship. Or maybe in the way that you want, you know. In the process of taking account of things with the Seven of Pentacles, um, you sort of get a handle on something. And it makes you more comfortable, I believe, to continue on in this relationship. It looks like a bit of a juggernaut here it's going to take you into 2022 uh riding a you know <laughs> um happy uh passion very passionate relationship virgo so thank you um if you think of any platform to share this please do i appreciate if you hit a like that helps the uh, ai algorithm and uh do subscribe if you haven't uh wouldn't mind help that too hit 1000 get close and do this live. Thank you guys.